Lady Chanel Riley. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Woo! Woo! Session, the last thing he told me. Um, please join me in welcoming tonight's guests. I want to start with uh, you talk about range. This is an Emmy winning host, actor, writer, director. Uh, two, I was trying to think of like two things more different than criminal minds and whose line is it anyway. Um, please welcome Aisha Tyler. Yeah. Bailey in the series. Please welcome Ann Gowrie Rice. We have a filmmaker whose movies include Where the Crawdads Sing. She directed three episodes of the series, including the finale you just saw. Please welcome Libby Newman. Uh, the head of film and television at Hello Sunshine, basically responsible for all your favorite series, and an executive producer on this series. Please welcome Lauren Newstep. <laughs> Finally, we have a four-time Emmy Award nominee and a SAG Award winner just for her work on Alias. She not only stars in the series as Hannah, but serves as an executive producer. Please welcome Jennifer Garner. <laughs> Purposely set uh, you, set you and Nikolai as far away from each other as possible. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> uh, chemistry. Is I know. <laughs> or else I might deck him. <laughs> I'm gonna get to that actually. I'm really curious about the ending, and I'm so excited that I get to talk about the ending with people who have seen it. Um, but I want to start at the beginning because, like so many people, I, I read this novel when it came out, and I was so riveted. Um, and you know, when you hear them making a, a, a series out of a book you love, you, you kind of have two reactions. You're excited, but you're also really nervous. Um, and I actually think that, that this series is, is even better uh, than the book. It, it improves on it in, in ways I didn't know were possible because I love the book. Um, and Lauren, it's Hello Sunshine. You obviously have this great track record of this. What was it about this book that, that made you see it could be adapted and specifically into a limited series? Well, I really loved it. I mean, when I read it, it was actually, I, I sort of jokingly say it was love at first pitch. When Laura Dave's agent called and pitched it to me, I called my executive, Ashley Stromwasser, and I said, could you please drop everything and start reading this book right now? Because I think I need to pull an all-nighter. And she read it and she said, oh my gosh, I love it. And I did pull an all-nighter and I loved it too. And then, you know, I sent it over to Reese and she read it. I mean, it's, it's also a wonderful novel because you can read it in like a day. Mm -hmm. um, so Reese, flew through it and then we got on with Laura and with Josh and it was just like, please, please, please let us tell this story. Um, and they had actually imagined it as a film. And I will say when I read it, I saw how it would unfold in episodes because Laura does an amazing job of creating these cliffhangers and these moments that leave you breathless. And so I actually really felt the rhythm of it. At first I thought it was six episodes and then our friends at Apple encouraged us to think about it as seven, uh, which was great, more for you guys to love and enjoy. And it was really a great privilege to work with Laura and with Josh, who happens to be her husband, but you know, the most incredible screenwriters and a wonderful representative writer's room that came together and brought, I think, even more to it as a limited series. So it was really, it was a joy and a privilege. Did Laura need any convincing to, to make it? Because you said originally they thought about it as a film. It was really interesting because it was Laura and Josh and they were very open to it, but they were sort of like, let us go back and look at it. And then I actually invited them to sort of contemplate it as a series and then come back and we could compare notes about where the episode breaks would fall. And we were aligned on all but one. Uh, and then Josh was like, okay, I agree with you. So we were talking about how that he took my pitch. But it was really kind of a fun exercise because I think they were very excited to imagine it as a limited series and to sort of think about how would we tell this story in chapters and really, I think that a limited series allows you to really delve into the details in a great way where you don't have to actually cut, cut, cut to get to those three acts, but you really can let the characters live and breathe and you can build out the ensemble. And I think they did a really beautiful job. And 
these amazing actors really brought all of those characters to life in such an incredible way. It's it's such a phenomenal cast, and and, and mm -hmm. Libby, you you directed three episodes of the show, including kind of setting the tone with the first two, and then coming back and and, and sticking a landing with the finale. Um, I heard that you know you you saw this more as a love story between Hannah and Bailey when you read it. Was that part of what appealed to you? Um, it, to me, it's a story about found family, um, and I was so moved by the ending because I. It, and I guess it, there's no spoilers here, so that's great. Um, <laughs> it's so free, and I'm so excited. The ending really makes, it really stops you in your tracks and sort of makes you think about what you as a parent would do in that situation. And I sort of had this experience reading it where I saw Hannah start so far from um, thinking that she knew what it was to be a mother to realizing at the end that she knew exactly how to be a parent to this child mm -hmm. and that this teenager sort of realizes at the end that she's going to be okay because she has this mother and so that for me that was the most emotional uh, moment of kind of realizing what they had found together even though they started so far apart at the beginning it's so beautiful uh, and obviously this series isn't going to work without the perfect cast um, Jennifer, I'm curious what interest you do, not only in the role of Hannah, but coming on board as producer. And I, I feel like I heard you say that you kind of campaigned for this role. I did, yes. I, I felt so strongly when I read the book. I just felt such a connection to Hannah. And, and I don't know why I'm not a stepmom. I, I have teenagers, but they're vastly different from hmm. Bailey. There was just something about the way that Hannah is not letting her circumstances define her and the way she um the way she's bumbling through but somehow accidentally keeps showing up for the people that she loves <laughs> even as, as as imperfect as as her attempts may be sometimes she is she is really um she is figuring it out and her her steadfast mothering is something that I just so respected. I don't know that I could claim to be the mother that Hannah is, but um, I respect the hell out of her. And so yes, I did campaign for it. I, I didn't know, if I hadn't done anything like this in a really long time ever, and I didn't know if I would be certainly on the top of anyone's list of pretty amazing peers out there. Um, and so I just sat down and um, put, took my hat in my hand and started writing letters and I stayed up all night a couple of nights and I they had to be if you're writing a letter and it's going to involve you know Laura Dave or Josh Singer um, you you better pen it pretty carefully so I wrote to Apple I wrote to I can't even remember um, did I write I feel like you sent Reese I sent a note yeah about the book and the character but they, I made them all different because I was afraid they were going to compare <laughs> notes so I was like all right done start from scratch I can't see that again and then they replied, so I had to do it again. But, um, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because I'm so grateful to be here. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say you campaigned for this role, I, I, I'm thinking you probably didn't have to campaign too hard. I, I'm imagining when you heard Jennifer Garner was interested. We were so excited. I will say, though, when someone talks about how they connect on a soul level to a character, it wasn't that we needed to be convinced, but we were so inspired. And I think that's, you know, it's such a lovely thing. I will say at Hello Sunshine, the first question that we ask ourselves when we read something is, do we really love it? And then what we want to do is bring together a community of people who also love it to bring it to life. Because I think that actually, the proof is in the pudding, right? You see it and you feel it. And, and I do think that we became a family in making it, right? That you talk about found family. And I think, you know, it was just a real privilege to get to make this together, that every person that came to this, it's also wonderful when you start with a, with a wonderful model, because you're all kind of having the same conversation, but bringing something different to it. And I think there was a lot of heart in this. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. obviously the relationship between Hannah and Bailey is so central to the show. Um, and Gowrie, can you talk about what drew you to the role of Bailey and how you sort of went about building this family on screen? Yes, uh, well, something I love about Bailey is that she's so uh, stubborn, and I think that's a really wonderful quality that she has. She is, much like Hannah, she is so certain of what she knows and what she knows about her dad and who she knows her dad to be. Um, so what, what I found really interesting about the story is that Hannah and Bailey are quite similar, but they're attacking the same problem in sort of different ways and sort of butting heads because of it. So I was very interested in this girl who 
whose entire world falls apart and her entire identity is linked to her dad and what does she do when that completely disappears so i was very interested in sort of breaking down those moments of um feeling so lost in who you are and really being pushed to lean on people that you're not um you're not expecting to lean on and mm -hmm. she by the end of the series i think she comes to find the family that she didn't expect but she knows that that family is still important and still worth something mm -hmm. to her I mean, you've worked with a lot of amazing actors, but at the same time, when you found out that Jennifer Garner and Nikolai <laughs> were going to be your parents, were you at all intimidated? Yes. <laughs> I, think, I think anyone would be. Um, but it also, it disappeared the moment I met them both. I mean, I, I first met Jen over Zoom in my uh, callback audition, and it was just, she just put me at ease, and I felt so comfortable and, and ready to and explore the scenes and then same with Nikolai when we met I just felt oh this is this is wonderful this is easy and um, it really does speak to the community that was brought together on set everyone had such a such a great vibe and such a, a willingness to um, explore the, the more emotional and more complex moments of, of the story in a very safe and comfortable way and that's that's how I felt with with these parents. <laughs> and Nikolai, I mean, Owen is a character who we, we primarily see through memories, through other people's impressions of him. What interested you in this part, and, and what were some of the challenges in portraying someone who is, you know, viewed through the lens of other people? Biggest challenge was the beard. <laughs> I spent five months in a cabin in Montana. <laughs> I finally got to read a song of, of Ice and Fire. <laughs> but I understand. I understand you tried out the beard, and people didn't recognize you. No, I. I we tried. It was a. There was a. It was a big thing because how would he have existed for five years and and without people knowing about him? I mean, obviously he wanted to be close so he could keep an eye on his family. Uh, so the beard seemed like a good idea. And then I I wanted to test it with with. With Jen, and then she was working that day, and I was I snug in, and I sat down next to her, and she was just like focused. She's, I mean, she really uh, gave her heart and soul to this character, and and she'd spent months and months worrying about Owen, about me, and I sat down, and she was she was in between scenes, just in her own world, and then I said. They could have been boys to love you. And she looked up and she was shocked. I started crying. Yes, and, and I felt so bad because I, oh no, I didn't mean to. But, I was so shocked. I spent all day, every day for five months just just thinking about it, nonstop worrying about him. And then there he was. And he had also, he hadn't been there for a while. It's not like I'd seen him the day before. He suddenly appeared next to me looking like someone else. And it, it, it's a good thing Hannah has more of a game face than I do, or he would have been like killed right there in that moment. That's amazing. Yeah. Was it the day you were shooting that scene, or were you just? No, 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 no. This was way before. We had to find out. There was a lot of discussion. <laughs> and girls, I needed those six months, so we had to get in early. But then I was thinking about something when you talked. Just I'm not, but I've been. You know that thing when you talk about a show, and you've done it. And I've watched it, and. There's something about how we define ourselves and how much the narrative we create about who we are, our, our identity is so much based on stories we're told when we're kids and stories that, you know, we see pictures and, and sometimes, you know, a parent will say, oh, you were such a tomboy, you always climbed a tree. Now, it might only have been once you climbed that tree, but because you're told that story, it becomes like, well, that's, that's what, who I am. And then, of course, I find that so interesting here because suddenly you have someone who finds out, both of these characters find out that the whole narrative is, is non-existent. I, I just find that really interesting. Yeah. How, does, how does that change us and what does that do to us? And it's, it's, it's such a complicated, interesting um, thing. Okay, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a show for you, you should watch it. <laughs> It's interesting because we were talking about sort of the chemistry of this family and, and Jennifer and Gory, and in, a, in a way you have a slight advantage because your characters don't start off close and they gradually become close, but you have to be the love of both these women's lives, honestly. And I'm really curious how you, you, know, you built this relationship 
that you feel has, has existed for years. Um, I heard a rumor that you two started by smelling each other. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Um, it's Libby's fault. Oh, yeah, it's Libby. Libby. Oh, okay. yeah. Go ahead. It's our, it's our direct dress. I, we had a wonderful movement uh, coach, I guess uh, she, you would call her, Rie Katagiri. And I had worked with her on Where the Crawdads Sing with Daisy and, and our other cast members to sort of inhabit the, the, the physicality of, of those characters. And so, Nikolai was flying in only a couple days before we started shooting, and I said, Jen, would you want to do a workshop where you guys can just kind of get to know each other physically so that it feels comfortable when, I think we were going to do that scene in the workshop, you know, the first week. I was told you're going to have an, a, a session with an intimacy coach. <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of know what that means usually. It's because there's a little sex scene, right? And I was like, God, there's been a rewrite here. <laughs> who has a session with an intimacy coach at before shooting, before shooting an intimate scene? Like, what do you need to figure out beforehand? But I work with other actresses that have demands that you go, okay, well, if that's what you need. So I thought mm -hmm. that was some a request from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't, no, no. And then, of course, I found out it was the director's idea. It was, by the way, I mean, it's a long story, but it was the best way to start a, uh, to meet someone. It was so much fun. And it was, uh, it kind of, if ever you need an icebreaker, you just sniff each other. <laughs> it, it was actually, there was a moment where we, she had us close our eyes and stand like almost, you know, six inches apart and start to smell each other and um you know but there was a moment where we both did what she told us to do and when he did it and i did it and we both almost laughed but we were committed to the yeah. exercise and the process i knew we'd be okay and that's kind of how we that that was our my experience the the entire time that yes. we were totally on the same page of all right let's go yes uh, and Gary, I'm guessing you didn't have to do that with either of them. <laughs> Not with them, but... Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> well, um, John, who plays Bobby, we did the same thing. I think we did a slightly different version, um, huh? but we did the, the same thing, sort of intimacy coaching or movement coaching, kind of the, the second time we've met. But the, <laughs> the, the, the funny thing is I already felt connected to John because... I am from Melbourne and I live in Melbourne and we did our call back over Zoom and he did his American accent and then I said, are you Australian? And he, he said, yes, I am. And I said, where are you from? And it turns out he lives 20 minutes away from me <laughs> and we'd never met and we had to fly to LA and work together to finally meet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Aisha, I'm really tempted to ask you who you had to smell. <laughs> I, I, I smelled everybody in the cast, actually, just Woo! without their knowledge. <laughs> uh, no, I did not get to sniff anyone. Unfortunately, I kind of feel left out. Um, but, I, I mean, as an actor, I feel like you do have to manufacture this intimacy relatively quickly, and most of the time you don't get the opportunity to kind of break that initial mm. ice of discomfort. You know, this whole process is so much about trust, and uh, I'm just—I was just admiring the stories because I think, I mean, it's lovely. It was, you know, you typically it was like, okay, you guys have been in love, and now make out, and you're like, <laughs> can I have a minute? <laughs> so it's, you know, I think it's—it's it's lovely. There was a really lovely intimacy on this uh, with everybody. It felt very much like home, and uh, and right away, you know, I mean, generally set a tone of welcoming, and that tone really cascaded through everybody's experience. Um, but I'm just, I'm really fond that I didn't smell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, smell Nikolai now, and let's know this. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, Jules actually is such a great character. It's so funny. If you ever want to make journalists love you, play a great journalist. <laughs> um, and I could be wrong about this, but I feel like she's actually in the series more than in the book. Yes, she was expanded quite a bit from the book, which was, which was really lovely. Um, you know, there was... There was, you know, I mean, I think in the in the book she she was a more peripheral, but this was really an anchor for Hannah and for Bailey, someone to remain kind of tied to home to, and and so much of what was happening to them was so bewildering and so disorienting. So it was lovely to have this friend that was, you know, a you know able to kind of impart information and do some of the stuff that they they could focus on the emotional work, and you know, Jules could focus on uh, figuring out oh, where that 
Well, I'll say it was. But um, but she also was, I really loved her because I felt like she was the kind of friend that I would want and that I would want to be, you know, I have female friends like this and male friends that I've had since I was a teenager. And there was just an, an effortlessness to that relationship that was built out of years of just love and trust, you know, and so it was really a joyful role to play for me. I re it, it was it was just, God, it was just so savory. Um, and then, you know, she got to tell people to fuck off occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Something this whole cast does really well, but I feel really, really falls on you a lot. And you're gonna think I'm kidding, but um, so much is communicated in the show through phone conversations and bad phone acting takes me out of the show so quickly. And you all do it so well. Um, can you talk about how you perfected those scenes? I mean, were you actually playing off of each other at all or? You know, not for the most part, although Jeff Stoltz uh, actually did come in and do his off-camera lines, which was like, I mean, he's such a great guy. Jeff Stoltz, Team Jake. Uh, <laughs> he did, I, our first, I, I never worked with him in person. And our first scene was a really big one for me, I think in the second episode. And he just said, yeah, I'll be there. Would it be helpful to you? I'll be there. And he was there and I, we worked on it quite a bit and it was hot outside. We were in San Pedro <laughs> on location. And he spent that entire day with us, just calmly walking back and forth under the, um, what, what do you call it, the arm? I've, I've lost jib arm. What do you call it? Yeah. <laughs> Take a couple of months off one strike and it's all gone. <laughs> we gotta get back to work. <laughs> yeah. So, but he just was right there, right off camera for me. And that, like, how kind is that? But yes, working on the phone is just so tough and we did a lot of it. I will say, Jen is probably the best actor I know um, at inserts phone inserts, yeah. all those little close-ups you see of the phone and hitting the mark, it's just Thank you, perfect. you we're going to take inserts really seriously. <laughs> I feel like you probably got a lot of experience on that with Alias, though, because you're talking into yeah. Yeah, secret mics a lot, so. Yeah, they were right here. <laughs> see, I just believed it right now. <laughs> um, I actually want to talk some more about the challenges of adapting this novel, because uh, I don't think this happens that often where the book author, Laura Dave, is also one of the co-creators of the series. Um, and I don't necessarily think an author's involvement is necessary, but it's kind of cool to have it. Um, you know, how did you sort of want to take advantage of that and, and, and use her to, you know, your best ability? Well, she and I have each other because she's just the greatest human ever next to Jennifer Garner. What a huge, Laura Dave. what a huge gaping, what a loss not to have. Laura here to talk to all of you, and Josh Singer as well, our, our writers, and all of our writers. Um. By the way, incredible collaboration. I mean, I, I think that it's interesting because it's such a gift when a novelist is able to say, I trust you, and please take this book and help me bring it to life and let's be partners in doing that. And Laura did just that. And I think it was wonderful to get to be a part of the partnership with her and Josh. And again, that wonderful writer's room, but also they were incredibly generous and patient and welcoming when it came to working with the actors. Like I know, and Jen, you should tell the stories of the, uh, the untold hours spent in their backyard reading those scripts out loud and, and with Livy, but there was such, it was such a collaboration um, and it was such a, a thoughtful, emotional process and a commitment to making the best show, which I think uh, they did an incredible job of. But you should share the stories of working on the scripts. Well, I don't know that I've ever had a more um, a, a more profitable or helpful um, rehearsal period. We, every, every day almost, and just for weeks and weeks and weeks, for a couple of months, I would go to Josh and Laura's backyard and we would sit under a tree and read through an episode. And then we would hash it out, we would disagree, we would talk it through, we would try to track things, um, and then they would revise and we would do it again. They were so open, they were so open to also explaining to me what I wasn't seeing, and just in that process, bit by bit, then we added Libby, then we finally got our in gallery. We just kept adding to those days under the tree, and bit by bit, it helped me just realize things, oh, Hannah is more still than I am. Oh, Hannah's voice is lower than mine. Oh, Hannah, you know, that's where the process really 
really went for me, and it was my favorite rehearsal period ever. Was it similar for the other actors? I mean, having the writers right there, you could probably ask them anything. Yeah, I felt um, I felt it, it's such a privilege to have them right there, and also to to sort of have the maybe blessings not the right word, but the the understanding that this is the world that Laura has created. It's it's her characters and her story, and to know that she collaborated and put so much work into adapting it as well, it felt like oh, we are doing this and she approves and this is her creation and that felt so nice. And yeah, the, the days where I got to be a part of the rehearsal under the tree with strawberries <laughs> and donuts, <laughs> was um, it was wonderful because to really sort of pinpoint those moments where Bailey opens up to Hannah or where she shuts down a bit. Um, and it also really helped in sort of, yeah, creating Bailey's character arc and there was one moment where um, Bailey had this big outburst and then it was rewritten so that she holds it back and that was really devastating and I kind of, I think that was, that rewrite was because of us reading it through before we even got onto set. Um, so that really helped with the character arc. Hmm. I, I mean, you guys know everything starts with the writing and uh, you don't always have the opportunity to consult with, with writers that closely on a show. And I know, Libby, you know, I'm, I'm actually probably everybody here, I know when I direct, I'm constantly going to the writer and think, okay, wait a minute, this is what I think, is this right? Is this what you intended? I mean, it should be that kind of an intimate relationship and, mm -hmm. and to have the person who created the world be there every day was just such a, a boom. But, you know, I mean, we'll say, I'll say it, we'll say it a hundred times, like everything starts with what's on the page and the gift of having the visionaries there and being able to ask them, you know, what they intended and then be able to bring that to life. I mean, it's a dream, it's a dream. Like I always say to people when I'm working with them, I'm like, well, I'm here to make your dreams come true. You know what I mean? So it's great to have the dreamer there, you know? I mean, I think if anyone would have questions for the writer, it might be the person playing Owen. <laughs> I know I have a lot of questions about Owen. Um, was there anything specifically you wanted to ask her? Yeah, what was he up to? <laughs> <laughs> Did she answer? No, I mean, I, she told me she had a hundred pages, but she didn't share. It's, it's fine. No, but I, this is an ongoing discussion. I'm just, uh, it's an ongoing She's promised these pages so many times. No. Um, but, so, so, yeah, it was a terrible relationship with the writer. I had. It was just, <laughs> no, listen, they were the best, the best. And Josh, just incredible. Um, yeah, I can't say. With Nikolai had this crazy thing where he was, because everything is through Hannah's memory, he's just the perfect best guy. So Nikolai would say, I, he can't be this good. He is impossible. But what was wild for me in watching you after when I was watching the series was seeing, you know, I'm all cuddled up with you and I'm thinking one thing is happening and then there's a moment where darkness crosses your eyes in front of the camera and I was like, oh, he was doing that when I was right there. <laughs> <laughs> Libby, for you, what's it like? I mean, it's supposed to be a, a, a rare advantage to be able to, as a filmmaker, to actually have the creators there. Yeah, it was, for me, it was just having this brain trust that I could tap into mm. for every decision. You know, when we were um, picking Hannah's houseboat, you know, having Josh there, it was a very different boat than Laura had originally imagined, but then talking through it and figuring out why Owen would pick this boat that was right in the middle of all of these other houseboats and sort of nondescript and really actually quite private except for the back being able to kind of have those discussions and talk through it and, and rationalize it, picking, you know, costumes that Hannah would wear. I mean, the conversations. Laura would know exactly what kind of dress Hannah would or would not pick, and then Jen would have her thoughts as well. So it was, for me, it was just amazing to have this whole brain trust to sort of tap into and have these debates and conversations on. I, I had a little bit of that with Delia on Crawdads, but she wasn't, you know, on set with us, so she was a resource, but she wasn't a, you know, a creative collaborator seeing the whole thing through, so it was, for me, it was wonderful. Now, I know um, so many people were obsessed with this show, and there were so many questions after it, and well, actually, maybe, like, two big questions. Um, we, we really want to know if you think Hannah told 
Bailey that she saw her father. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Really? Yes. I wondered if she would. Okay. Yeah, I promised to. Well, I, I stopped lying to her. I stopped. Hannah She's still the evil stepmom, you know? So, 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 so it was like, oh, hey, yeah, oh, I saw your father. Yeah. He didn't have time for you. Um, but he still loves me. <laughs> So. Don't you think that Hannah and Bailey are in it together at this point so much and that Hannah has made an, a promise, whether it's implicit or not, to tell the truth from now on? They, she says. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I think that it's painful, but I don't think that we shy away from what's painful anymore, right? Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. That's what I was hoping. It's very interesting because I, I read this book before I became like a godmother, and I think that my reaction to the ending was very different after that. It was like, yeah, of course you would give up anything. Of course, you, like at first I was like, no, don't let this guy go. He's perfect. And then I was like, no, this this is the ending. It has to be. I'm curious if you sort of had those discussions on set too, like you know what you would have done in her situation. I feel like I can't speak for anyone else, but I certainly would have done that. I mean, I think that that's the thing that really makes the novel extraordinary. I mean, there are many things that make it extraordinary, and I think that Hannah's agency and her optimism, even in the face of so much uncertainty, you know, she's not she's not a victim. She's not a woman scorned. She is a woman who needs to understand what happened, mm -hmm. and I think in turning over those cards and understanding what happened she feels this incredible connection to this young woman. And it isn't just because Owen said protect her, that she's protecting her. She's protecting her because she loves her. And I think, I, I mean, again, I don't want to speak for anyone else. I will speak for myself and say I connected so deeply to that. And certainly, I think, I think we are all Hannah. Um, in a way, you know, the women that, that read the book, I think there's a reason that it came onto the New York Times bestseller list at number one and that it's still right up there, you know, all these, all these years later. Well, going back to what Libby was saying at the beginning, I mean, that's, that's the love story. You end with the love story. It's, it's a weirdly happy ending for something that carries so much sadness. Mm. Anyone, anyone else have any thoughts on it? It's so funny because it doesn't feel like a Hollywood ending at all. Yeah. And the Hollywood ending would be that they would run away together and they'd be in a cabin in Alaska and then you know, we'll see the guys coming on snowmobiles and come together, you know. And it, but it was something that you just innately understood that to, she was going to give Bailey the best life she could give her and that meant that she had to make this incredible sacrifice. And it's so elegant. I mean, it's such a beautiful ending. Mm -hmm. um, just born of like real maturity and strength. And you kind of think all of us are like, <laughs> but I mean, that's why that's why it's so compelling and it makes perfect sense you know yeah. well witness protection sounds compelling too I have to say like they make a good case for it so. I don't know I don't think that's <laughs> with David Morse <laughs> no. yeah or the character he's playing no yeah. <laughs> um, well again it's such a fantastic show it is the last I believe the last word that that your character says is mom right yeah yes that's correct Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I just want to remind everyone that all episodes of this series are available on Apple TV+. Plus. Watch it again. Tell your friends. I want to congratulate you all on such a fantastic project. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for